If you're looking to master Echo for Season 11 or you just want to learn how the champion works, then you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll be covering everything you need to know to start taking over your games as Echo mid. So with that being said, let's get right into it. First, if we quickly break down his kit, his passive is Z-Drive Resonance. Echo gains a burst of damage and move speed after hitting his opponent with three consecutive attacks or abilities. His Q is Timewinder. It's a projectile that slows and deals damage on the way out and also deals damage on the way back too. You want to max this out first. His E is Phase Dive. It's a dash that can be reactivated to jump onto an enemy. Max this one out second. His W is Parallel Convergence, the active portion is an AoE stun that also grants Echo a shield, and the passive makes your autos deal bonus damage when the enemy is below 30% HP. You want to max this one out last. And then his ultimate is Chrono Break. Echo snaps back to where he was 4 seconds ago, healing and dealing damage to anyone in the area. Max this at 6, 11, and 16. Moving on to Echo's combos now, the first one here is going to be the most important combo you got to learn and it's the EQ animation cancel. So you EQ immediately after, it's going to cancel the animation of your Q, then you use your E2 onto the opponent, you auto attack to proc your passive, and this is your bread and butter trading pattern with Echo. You can do the exact same animation cancel with your W, so you E1, W immediately after, and this is going to be very useful for you when you're trying to escape ganks in the early game. The third combo is his fastest one-shot burst combo. You want to use Rocket Belt to reset your auto attack. So you start off the combo the exact same way. E1, Q immediately after to animation cancel at E2. And then Rocket Belt immediately after you E2 so that you reset your auto attack. You use your auto attack to proc your passive. And that's going to be your fastest one-shot burst combo with Echo. Now you can also use your Rocket Belt to help you gap close onto the opponent, so if you're not quite in range to use your EQ animation cancel to get right onto the enemy, then you can E1 Rocket Belt to give yourself the move speed and the gap closer to get up to the opponent, then E2, Q, auto attack to proc your passive. Now you're able to reposition the second part of Echo's Q coming back towards you with your E, so if you throw the first part out and it misses, you can E to redirect the second part of your Q so that you get a stack of your passive and that so you can proc that passive easier. And you can do the exact same thing with your flash as well. So this is going to be very useful for you when you're team fighting in the mid to late game. If you need that second part of your Q to hit, say the enemy like flashes away from you, you can flash onto them so that the second part of your Q comes back so that you're able to proc your passive quicker. Now a combo you can use if you're right up next to the opponent, if you don't need to use your E to gap close onto them, then you can use your Q first followed by an auto attack E1, E2, and that just gives you a very quick proc your passive. If you're right up next to the opponent and you don't need to use your Q first to get the slow so that you're a range of your auto attack, you could just auto attack first followed by your Q, E1, and then E2. And then for your engage or flank combo with Echo later on, you just want to throw in your W there first. So W and then followed by your EQ animation cancel combo. And then for your fastest one shot combo with your ultimate, what you can do is you can throw your W down behind you. When the enemy ends up walking over your W and your shadow, you can E1, alt back onto them, E2, Q, and this just allows you to quickly proc your passive and get a lot of burst off. So moving on to a bunch of tips and tricks now, if you don't put a point in your ultimate at level 6, the enemy isn't going to see your shadow, and this will allow you to bait the enemy in to thinking that your ultimate is down. So for example, if you get ganked and you don't level up your ultimate until you actually need it, the enemy might try to dive you, you level up your ultimate, you ult, you outplay them, you win the 1v2, and you get a nice double kill. There's also certain plays to where you can look to trade with the opponent very aggressively, EQ onto them, you know, chunk them to half HP, and then as you're backing away, you put a point into your ultimate, level it up, all back into them, they're not going to be expecting it, and you can just outplay a lot of situations by doing this early on. You can base buy items and then alt back to lane so that you don't miss out on any farm. This is definitely very situation based and you don't want to be using this for every single game, but say if you're in a situation to where you end up getting chunked out really hard, if you're in a difficult matchup, you get bullied out of lane, uh, you can base and then alt back to lane so that you don't end up missing out on a big cannon wave. A lot of bad TP plays for most champions are actually good TP plays for Echo. So if you have your ultimate available and you have your teleport, if you notice there's like a couple very free kills, like the enemies are super low, but it's like a 2v5, you can actually still make that teleport play with Echo as long as the enemy team doesn't have like a lot of hard CC. You can TP in, pick up those two free kills, and then just alt right back to where you teleported from. 
Learning to execute all of Echo's wall jumps are really important for you to be able to find some nice engages later on in the game and also being able to escape certain situations. So two of the most important ones that I don't really see enough Echo players use are the ones in the river bush there beside mid lane. So I'll show you guys in the gameplay here in the background, but getting these wall jumps down will just make your flank plays later on in the game so much stronger. When the enemy team is trying to face check into you at Dragon or at Baron, you can use this wall jump here or use these wall jumps, throw W over in the choke to where they're trying to uh, walk into, E over the wall, get a really nice engage off. You can flash into your W if you need that extra range to be able to stun them really quickly, and it will just allow you to find a lot more picks effectively later on in the game. There's also a couple other ones that you're not going to be using as often, but there's the one by the wolf camp there that's uh, pretty difficult to do. Actually, this one takes a while to get used to for sure. You're not going to find yourself using this one very often though. There's the one over by the raptor camp there, which actually will be pretty useful for you a lot of the time if you are trying to make dive plays uh, over mid lane. This is more one that you'd be using if you're playing jungle echo than mid echo though. And there's also one over by the baron pit there that a lot of people don't know that can allow for you to find some nice engages if the enemy team is starting up Baron. Now something you should be aware of, this one here isn't really going to come into effect in most of your games, but if you ult through your W and someone is standing inside, you'll still be able to proc the stun on them even though you don't land inside it. So as long as you go through your W and if there's somebody standing inside it, it will proc the stun there and it will also grant you the shield. So that is just something that you can be aware of. It might come in handy in, uh, in maybe one instance in like a hundred of your Echo games. Later on in the game, you always want to be trying to position in the fog of war when looking for picks with your W. The enemy won't be able to see the animation or hear the sound if you do this, which will make your pick plays so much stronger. You can also look to execute this in the early stages of the laning phase. If you have the wave shoved in, you can look to dip into the side lane bush there or sit behind the mid lane wall and look for picks with your W. When the enemy walks up for the wave, position your W onto where you think they're going to move. You can just come out of the bush there and especially in the lower elos, the enemy is not going to be expecting this kind of pick play a lot of the time and it can just allow yourself to get some really free trades off and even some solo kills early on in lane. Swap out your yellow trinket to red trinket once you're about level 6. This can allow you to roam a lot more effectively and it's also very key for when you're trying to find those flank plays or look for those picks later on with your W because you want to make sure that you're never on vision when you're trying to find those picks. The window you have to proc Echo W stun is actually a lot longer than most people expect. You have 1.5 seconds after it lands for you to be able to proc it. Echo W is really long range and it also provides you with vision, so in the mid to late game, if you don't have vision around an objective, you always want to be using your W to check bushes so that you don't have to walk in and you don't face check. This is a really good tool that you should be using later on in the game. And then you can also use the vision from Echo W to reveal camps, allowing you to jump over two walls with one E when you're trying to escape. So say you're uh, dipping down into the river bush, you can throw your W over into the raptor pit there, E over the river wall, and then you can E into the raptor pit with the second part of your E to allow you to jump over two walls. There's also one over by the dragon pit there to where you can throw your W over to the Krug camp, E over the dragon pit wall, and then use your E to onto the Krugs. When you're team fighting later on with Echo, it's so important that you analyze the enemy composition and just think about how much potential CC do they have and burst damage. This is really going to change how early you're looking to use your ultimate. If they have a lot of burst or crowd control, you want to make sure you're ulting sooner rather than later so that you don't get Jensened. Now the best usage of Echo W early on in lane most of the time is just to help you secure last hits. So many Echo players just don't even use their W unless it's to look to engage, but if you're trying to get a cannon or you just need to walk up and last hit some creeps, throw your W down to scare the enemy off and to get the shield so that you don't take as much damage when you're looking to secure those minions. You can also use the W to help you set a freeze as well early on in the laning phase, so if you don't want the wave to crash into your tower, you can throw the W down to stun the wave so that you don't take any minion aggro and that's so you keep the wave in front of your tower. When early trading with Echo, you want to quickly proc your passive and then use the move speed to dodge and run away. Taking extended trades will almost always turn a one trade into a losing trade for Echo early on. 
And then with the buffs to his passive damage this season, Echo can steal Dragon and Baron so easily, especially later on. Once your three items, if you have your Rocket Belt, if you have your Lich Bane, and you got Rabidons, his passive with E is going to deal over a thousand damage to Baron, a thousand damage to Dragon. So this is really important for you to just be aware of. You can look to throw your Q over the wall, for example, get those two procs of your passive, E into the pit, proc that passive when the drag dragon or baron is around 1k hp and get some really easy steals off so if we move on to breaking down echo's matchups now the first category we have here are his ban matchups so these are pretty much the unwinnable matchups for echo echo tends to do very poorly into champions that have very easy ways at not allowing him to proc his passive. So for Fizz, for example, there, if Fizz holds on to his E, if he never engages with it first, then Echo can never be the one to engage himself, where he can never look to trade onto Fizz, because if you try to trade onto Fizz and he still has his E available, he can hold his E to dodge out on your passive proc, not allow you to proc your passive, and it makes it so that you're never gonna be able to win a trade. Same thing with Akali there. If you try to jump on Akali, she throws her shroud down and she doesn't allow you to proc your passive or she waits out until the passive expires on her and then she trades on to you and you're just never going to win a trade. For the bruiser picks like Pantheon, Aurelia, Renekton, they generally just do very well into Echo. Like any bruiser champion is very difficult for Echo to deal with and then Kastin just beats Echo early on, outscales him later on too. So I would recommend using your ban right now on either Akali, Fizz, Kastin, or Yasuo. Uh, even though Pantheon, Aurelia, and Renekton are difficult matchups, they're not played a ton in the meta right now. So when you are, you know, using your ban or considering who you should ban, you got to take a look at champion pick rate, how strong they are. I personally ban Fizz right now because he's played a ton and he's also a very strong pick and a difficult matchup for Echo. For the next category here, we have Echo's hard matchups. So these aren't as unwinnable as the ban matchups, but they're definitely still very difficult. And in most of these matchups here, you're just looking to go even. You're just looking to farm throughout the early game. And then for Echo's skill matchups, these are ones to where you can definitely win. So they can go 50-50. It kind of depends on how well you know how to play Echo in the matchup, how well the enemy knows how to play their champion. But if you're experienced in the matchup, you should be able to win these lanes with Echo. And then for his easy matchups, you really shouldn't be losing these. So most of these champions here are like squishy mages that are skill shot oriented. So if you can just dodge out on their skill shots with your E, your rocket belt, if you can get right on top of them, it's very difficult for them to do anything against you. So especially like Vagar, Malzahar, those are like two of his easiest matchups in my opinion. So now if we move on to breaking down the build, for starting items, it's either going to be Corrupting Potion or Doran's Ring. I would recommend Corrupting Potion if you're new to Echo. If you're more experienced though, or if you're in the easier matchups, you can go for the Doran's Ring start. Early base, you want to always grab a Dark Seal. Dark Seal is such a great item for Echo. Uh, it's such a cost-efficient item as well, so you never want to be passing up on Dark Seal there. Uh, if you have enough gold for an Amp Tone as well, pick one of those up. If you got enough gold for boots grab those too so dark seal you know amp tone boots on your early base is what you'd be looking to grab for your core items you want to go into a rocket belt first there rocket belt is going to be your first really big spike on echo after that you want to go into sork shoes and then lich bane as your second item now you can go for nasher's second as well which we will talk about in a second here so for situational items, Seeker's Arm Guard is going to be a very good rush against AD champions. So if you're up against a Talon, a Zed, a Kiana, then grabbing a Seeker's even before you pick up your Rocket Bell. So just going Dark Seal into Seeker's is what you'd want to do. If you do need Grievous Wounds, you can build an Oblivion Orb, but don't make the mistake of upgrading it to a Morello. Unless you're completely out of item slots, if you've maxed out, then you can upgrade your Oblivion Orb to Morello. But a lot of Echo players make the mistake of building Morello. It's just not a cost-efficient item. And even most of the time, a lot of Echo players will just overvalue the healing reduction from Grievous Wounds. Unless the enemy composition has a ton of healing, if they only have like one champion that's healing, Going for Grievous Wounds just isn't really necessary most of the time, and it's not super easy for Echo to proc as well. Like, you're really only going to be able to proc it on one target, the target you're jumping on, so he doesn't get as much value as, like, other AoE Mage Champions by going for this item. 
Now, if you're snowballing in the early game, you almost always want to upgrade that Dark Seal to a Majize. If you got over seven stacks on your Dark Seal, then upgrading to Majize is going to be cost efficient for you. So all you need is seven stacks. It might have actually even increased this season with the changes to Majize and the changes to Dark Seal. So it's overall just a really good item. And especially if you have 10 stacks on that Dark Seal, don't even hesitate to upgrade to that Majize there. And you usually want to do it after you end up finishing your Rocket Belt. All right, and then for Nashers, this can replace Lichbane as your second core item there. It really kind of comes down to personal preference, comes down to the game. Nashers is going to be the better split push tool. It does allow for you to push waves a lot quicker, allows you to be stronger in the split there if you're 1v1ing and taking very extended trades. So uh, if you're team fighting more, Lichbane, it is going to deal more just straight up burst damage. You're just going to have better one pop with the Lichbane. So like I said, kind of comes, comes down to personal preference, depends on the game as to whether you go Lich Bane or Nashers. Now for your third and fourth items on Echo, Rabidons is going to be the go-to third item in most of your games. If the enemy team does have a lot of magic resist, then you can build Void Staff in that slot. If the enemy comp is very heavy AP, picking up a Banshee'sville as your third item is an option, but I wouldn't be going for this in most of your games. Like really only if they're literally full AP would I pick up a Banshee'sville. And then Zhonya's there, a little bit of a noob trap item on Echo. If the enemy comp is heavy AD, grab a Seekers, but you don't actually get any more armor for upgrading seekers into Zhonya's so unless you really value that stasis if the enemy comp has like a fizz or a zed and the stasis is going to be really good for you then you can upgrade it to upgrade your seekers to Zhonya's but most of the time I just sit on your seekers there and go towards a different item like Rabadon's third instead of upgrading to Zhonya's. So moving on to Echo's rune pages now, for your primary runes, taking Electrocute as your keystone is going to be standard for almost every single game. Some people do go Hail of Blades, it does have some viability, but I wouldn't really worry too much about Hail of Blades on Echo, it's more so something that only if you're like super high elo and it's very matchup dependent, you can go Hail of Blades. Electrocute is just super consistent for him. Sudden Impact there, Eyeball Collector, Ravenous Hunter, don't really want to swap anything around there, you can swap a sudden impact for taste of blood if you value the sustain early on but generally those are going to be the three best runes there in the domination tree for your rune stats you want to be taking double adaptive and then either the armor or the magic resist depending on the matchup and then for your secondary runes on Echo, this is where things can really shift around a ton and it depends on personal preference, depends on your matchup. The first viable option here is going for Precision Secondary with Tenacity and Presence of Mind. This is the Zhao Lai Ban setup. This is the setup the best Echo player in the world runs right now. It's really strong. It has a very good win rate in solo queue as well. And it's going to be great for you, especially against those very heavy CC compositions because of the tenacity that you're getting. Now, Inspiration Secondary is completely viable as well, and this is one that I tend to uh, lean towards in most of my games. A lot of uh, high elo echo players really like this page as well. It's to where you run the Dematerializer and you go either Time Warp, or you can also do Free Boots. So if you do value being able to skirmish a little bit better in the early game, having some more, you know, 1v1 threat, you can take the Time Warp Tonic there. Uh, if you want more of a scaling page, you can take the Boots, and by going for the Boots there, it allows for you to hit your item Item spikes a lot sooner in the mid game because you don't have to invest that 300 gold into boots you can put that into your rocket belt dematerializer i should mention there as well is really nice on echo because if you use all three of your charges on the range minions or on the caster minions there you're gonna start one hitting that back wave at level seven and that just allows for you to start roaming a lot earlier it allows for you to perma shove waves in so if you're in a more difficult matchup and you kind of just want to get out of the laning phase you want to skip lane as quick as you can then going for this DMAT strategy is super good on Echo. You can also look to take Futures Market. That's completely viable. Boots and Futures Market there actually does have a very high win percent for any room page on Echo right now, and it just allows for you to hit your mid game spike as fast as possible. And then Sorcery Secondary is completely viable as well on Echo. Taking the Absolute Focus combined with the Gathering Storm is one you're going to see 
a lot more popular in the lower elos also pretty popular over in korea uh, compared to most of the other setups you can also look to go mana flow ban paired with transcendence and this is one that does give you some nice added mana sustain it also makes your team fighting quite strong there with the uh, haste you get from transcendence also the cooldown reduction you're getting from uh, picking up kills there so these are completely viable options as well for secondary pages on echo and then for summoner spells on echo flash every single game and then either the ignite or the teleport depending on preference also depending on the elo so in plat and below i would just recommend taking ignite pretty much every single game once you get up to diamond and above to where matchups do tend to matter a lot more uh, the teleport is going to be very valuable for you on echo to help you get past your little bit of a weaker early game the split pushing with teleport later on is also going to be way more valuable for you in the higher elos if you're in easy matchups though if you're against like Cassidy and silas then taking ignite even in the higher elos is definitely viable you can even go ignite every single game so it kind of just does come down to you know personal preference but i would say that definitely lower elos platinum below taking ignite every single game once you get up into the higher elos it kind of just does come down to the matchup and your preference all right guys so that is going to be all for the season 11 echo guide if you're looking to learn even more about echo for the upcoming season you can check out my stream over on twitch i do tend to play quite a bit of echo over there so check that out if you're interested but with that being said if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already so thanks for watching have an awesome day and i will see you in my next video